Think for a moment about the city of Chicago. If you could describe it in one word, what would it be? Modern? Classical? Progressive? Historical, maybe? All of the above? Chicago is a complex duality of strong roots in the past and a persistent drive towards the future. Every part of the city speaks to this dichotomy, from its places to its people. This is what Chicago always will be like and what it always has been. Take a look back a hundred years ago, at the turn of the century. Chicagoans were looking towards a new millennium. Change was on the horizon and skyscrapers were springing up left and right. In the middle of all this was a vision for something different, something that would represent what we had achieved and could achieve, but was unapologetically built on tradition and heritage. Thus, the Field Museum was born. The Field Museum is known as the crown jewel of Chicago's lakefront, and it stands on the scenic museum campus in stylistic harmony with the nearby Shedd Aquarium. What to us is natural and fitting once raised a storm of controversy among Chicagoans of the past. Before construction could even begin on the Field Museum, several prominent civil groups in early 20th century Chicago became embroiled in a conflict regarding the museum's proposed location. Protesters were concerned that building the Field Museum at its initial site in Grand Park would spoil the Lakeside Park, and after a significant push, it was moved to its current location at 1400 South Lakeshore Drive. The museum houses a virtual microcosm within its collection, containing specimens from every corner of the world, and the style of the building reflects that characteristic. At the end of the Great Hall, there is a high vaulted ceiling. This structure is an apse, and it serves a deliberate purpose in the aesthetic of the building. The depth and shape of the apse are reminiscent of the sky, massive, universal, and seemingly infinite. It brings out a sense of wonder in the viewer and inspires them to reach toward the vastness of the unknown and the future. This element not only connects the viewer to the future though, it also has strong ties to the past. An apse is one of the most notable features of the Pantheon, an ancient temple in Rome also known for its relation to the ideas of universality and worldliness. The apse isn't the only element in the design of the museum to express this concept. Immediately to either side of the apse are two statues raised on high pedestals, the Muses of the Field Museum. The Muses are female statues that represent the ideals and the goals of the Field Museum. They represent record keeping, research, science, and the dissemination of knowledge respectively. While they may not be muses from the Greek myth, they serve the same purpose in the museum, to inspire and to encourage. The muses are a physical embodiment of the drive towards progress that Chicago values so much. The statues stand atop tall ionic columns. In a sense, the columns represent the true purpose of the museum building, to provide stability and support to the ideas which the muses represent. Columns are the most prevalent architectural element of the Field Museum, but they hold a symbolic meaning in addition to their structural role. Columns represent the goal of providing security and stability. For the Field Museum, this is correlated with the idea of being a location where scholars and citizens alike can pursue what are the main ideals of every museum, furthering human knowledge and disseminating it across the populace. The columns line the inside of the museums on either side of the Great Hall, but also adorn the front entrance of the museum. Next to the columnade at the front entrance of the museum are structures that at first glance seem to be columns as well. In fact, these are statues that also function as columns, also known as caryatids. Caryatids are an architectural element that dates back to ancient Greece. One of the most prominent examples of their use is the Erechtheum in Athens. The Erechtheum was a temple and was renowned for the Caryatids which adorned its porches. The Caryatids are more than just statues though, they are structurally significant, load-bearing elements of design. This begs the question, why not just use a normal column in the museum's design? It's difficult to be certain why the architect made this distinction here, but the difference between a column and a Caryatid is the human touch that the Caryatid symbolizes. While a column is associated with a vague notion of strength and stability, the Caryatid makes it clear, it is the people that uphold this establishment, and not just any people, 
It carry items outside the museum to fit classical figures into the design of ancient women that are supporting the building with their body. This presents a clear message. The structure you see today, and by extension, the city you see today, is only possible with the support of the civilizations and the people that came before you. Chicago today was built upon the foundations of the societies and cultures past, yet it is populated with innovators and movers and shakers. Reconciling these distinct ideologies leaves us with this, Chicago inherited a tradition and culture of progress. From its flag to its buildings, the city remembers its past and dreams of the future, and the Fields Museum is no exception. It takes the universality of classical structures like the Pantheon and Erechtheum and adapts it to a modern context while still preserving their symbolism of strength, progress, and universality. It was built to be an anchor to the classical roots of our civilization and a guiding light to the universe of possibilities in our future, and it continues to fill that role to this day.